Motion to approve. Consider our idea. We have put a lot of thought and effort into the activity center. All of us hope this helps the kids of our town to have a fun place to be welcome. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I did not get the other Okay. I didn't get right. to know. That's okay. All right. Roman had a uh, Minecraft. Do you want to tell him, Roman? Okay. Um, I'm on Minecraft World, uh, based around the floor plan of their design, with things including I tried to make it as functional as possible while making it also look good. Just to make it, just to give it more of an image of what I said. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you want to step back? 
23. Daniel's on. That is 94. Ever since COVID, the number of things to do has dropped. A lot of businesses have closed. It's not as safe as many activities. Also, a lot of parts and places to store are out of date. For example, the ice skating room and the YMCA. If these things are closed and outdated, kids and people will get lazier and unhealthier. Our idea. Our idea was to take a room in the YMCA and turn it into a rock concert. We want to make it nature themed. We have, we want to make we want to have many walls with different types of teams, such as desert, rainforest, ocean, snowy mountain, and volcano. Our wall would be made in plastic that check texture to look like a nature scene. We also want to add animals to one of the places that could be an animal scale. We also wanted to have different levels of different. We should charge a cheap amount of money so people will not have to worry about paying a lot of money. So maybe two dollars per kid and five dollars per adult. The business can pay us for the idea. This would be like buying a patent from us. Once they pay us for the idea, they can do what they want as long as it's to the federal requirements. Also, they will need to cover building costs and insurance and safety measures. Okay. So the desert thing will be very rocky and sandy. And you could grab an attack or maybe catch a few. Ocean. For the ocean section, we put we sprinkle it to make it wet and make it climb up on the clean stuff and it would be hard to take a step. Our rainforest, this level would have branches to grab on. It would be like climbing through trees with green for cameras. It would have lots of shrubbery and plants. Snow and mountain. This could be like fake snow and grow on snow leopard. The mountains would be the hardest one. Volcano. The volcano escape, we could use volcanic rocks and also have an idea to erupt the volcano. The creature would be on a tennis. When it goes off, the wall would shake like the volcano would shake. Conclusion. I think you should accept our idea. It will make people more active and you'll also be excited for something new. We hope you like our idea and presentation. Sidewalks. Either you care about them or you don't. We need uh -huh. new ones in bloom. Not only that, but immediately you need to refurbish older ones. School. Many schools have schools walking them. Many streets around the school don't have any sidewalks near them at all. This means that more people are walking in the street and reckless driving from injury or even death. How much would it cost? The cost isn't isn't that big. It costs about nine dollars per square foot of sidewalk. It costs about about the same amount for a pair of one square foot of sidewalk. Winter in the winter, sidewalks are much more needed because the roads are icy. It's no covered places, and some people still have to walk places like school or work. Building more sidewalks would help in these times. In conclusion, you need more sidewalks because there are a lot of areas where there are schools. With no sidewalks. And there are a lot of little kids in that area. This is why we need more sidewalks in the list. Thank you for your time and support. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, is this
Justin Long, Brandon Iowa by Lily Wright and Paige Anderson. In our community, in our in Iowa, we need more interaction. We need to be involved by doing things for people in our community. Helping our community is not that hard. The things we do to help people every day. We need to help more in order to be better. Doing good is easy. For example, helping people study or even just following the French character. There are also some problems with volunteering. Some kids might not be old enough to volunteer, or they might not be able to do it as easily as others. It's not hard to volunteer, but if people don't like to volunteer, they might not have as much fun. If some people volunteer, then tell other people our community would be seen as good and we could help other communities become better too. Some details. Some people don't like to volunteer and that's okay. It might be easier to spread the word by telling people about opportunities to volunteer. Volunteering doesn't cost you any money. It doesn't even have to take time away from your day. It can be something as simple as holding the door open for the person behind you. Boone Senior Valley Railroad. The Boone Senior Valley Railroad is a local rail railroad here in Boone, Iowa. There are volunteering opportunities such as the Center Express, which is a train ride that occurs nearly for holidays, and a Thomas the train ride, which is around the summer time. Keep Iowa Beautiful. In the community, volunteering, also known as Keep Iowa Beautiful, is about helping the community by cleaning. Good community volunteering helps take care of the state fair and other smaller fairs in Iowa. They help clean up after animals, picking up litter and more. Good community volunteering is an opportunity to keep to help keep Iowa clean and beautiful. Library. Boone Erickson Public Library is the only library in Boone. For volunteering on Wednesdays and Thursdays, you can come to the library for story time and they let other kids volunteer to read from their window. They also let kids restock the bookshelf. In Boone, there is a forage group called the Green Farmers. They have activities that help the community in some way. Near Christmas time, they go to either a hospital or nursing home and stay in Christmas fairs. In the summer, there are activities for the fairs, such as gardening, animal showing, baking, <coughs> etc. There are also things they do to help in the community, such as cleaning up a graveyard overall, or it keeps the community, which helps the community in many ways. YSS. YSS is an organization that helps kids and families in need. You can volunteer to be a mentor and help younger kids study. YSS has helped over 300 young kids get a mentor in 2021. Iowa Wildlife. The Iowa Wildlife Center helps wildlife, wildlands, and human spirit. The volunteering committee includes folks to learn skills to care for those wildlife lives. People can support it through rescue, care, and education. Green Area Humane Society. The Green Area Humane Society volunteers help them care for many animals that are lost, homeless, or abandoned. All the volunteers must be 18 or older if they want to volunteer regularly, and the Green Area Humane Society trains the volunteers so they know how to care for their animals properly. Eastern Star. Eastern Star is a nursing home here in Green that you can volunteer for. Eastern Star has things like music, dance, arts, crafts, poetry, humor, and just spending time with the ladies. Eastern Star has an application for volunteering that you can fill out without even going to the nursing home. And these are the ones that we have to fill out the activity. <laughs> Oh, very good job. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank if you, you have any questions for any of us, we're willing to take questions if you'd like, if you have any. Yes. Um, I didn't get to share the video because I didn't have it in there, but I turned on my hotspot. So I was wondering if you guys could check again for it. Check right now. Well, he's lucky. Yeah, it's fantastic. And we, it's kids like you that we need in this community. I, I know it's probably nervous coming up in front of us, but you, every one of you did a great job. So thank you. Yep, that's the video. So that was the entrance with the reception. There's a computer there and stuff.
That's awesome. That's the word there. <laughs> there's a zombie in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's a place for like treadmills. Uh, there would be more and it would be bigger, but uh, it's a little bigger. There's a lots of track in there. Things and like I said, last month there would be more, it would be bigger. Except, yeah, pictures. What's that picture? And then here would be like they had a social ish area last time, that could be like a, a room or something where people could go there and watch. I don't know, TV. <laughs> or it could just be really anything. And down here would be this is the common area where the table, bunch of desks, stuff where you can do the crafts, do books, whatever. Then there's
And next up, B2864 resolution appointing UMB Bank of West Des Moines, Iowa to serve as pay, main agent, note registrar, and transfer agent, approving the main agent and note registrar and transfer agent agreement and authorizing the execution of the agreement. Second, call the roll. Frank? Yes. Morning. Yes. 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 Second. Yes. 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 Okay, C twenty eight sixty five resolution approving and authorizing a formal loan agreement and authorizing providing for the issuance of sewer revenue capital loan notes and providing for a method of payment of the notes, including approval of the tax exemption certificate and continuing disclosure certificate. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Former. Yes. Yes. Second. Yes. Ray. Yes. Bird. Yes. Again. Yes. Sign. Yes. Okay. Public hearing to consider the sale of property, which is listed below. Um, is there any written comments? Any public comments? Not to this public hearing is closed. CE public hearing on proposed plan specification formal contract and estimate cost for the 2021 water treatment plant removal of lime residuals project. Any written comments? Any public comments? Not this public hearing is closed. Uh, number four, report of standing committees, policy administration, DJ. Uh, yes, we have one item uh, tonight uh, regarding the fiscal year 2022 uh, health insurance renewal. And I'll turn it over to Bill. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> so if you remember a while back, we uh, staff asked for some help with, from the Policy Administration Committee to consider uh, health insurance renewals for fiscal year 22. Uh, some of the numbers that came in uh, were extremely high. Uh, they started up around 16 and with some adjustments down and ended up finally at 10.7. That was approximately $162,000 of that money was budgeted for fiscal year 22. So staff and the committee reviewed other alternatives uh, presented by IPEP. As you know, IPEP is the organization we belong to for our health insurance. Uh, an alternative plan that was reviewed by uh, the committee and staff was an alternative plan called IPEP-BXSE. What that plan is, is uh, it's a reduction in premium of about not quite 3%, savings of about $40,000 uh, if the city would choose to go with that. Uh, it's the same in network benefits to union and non union employees, except there is a $75 copay for urgent care. Uh, I guess to explain that a little bit, urgent care appears to be used a lot more uh, than in the past. So now they're separating that out. So with this plan, there's a copay. Uh, in our contracts and with other employees, we have co-pays of 10%. Uh, in addition, this plan, the deductible increases uh, to $5,000 for a single plan and $10,000 for a family. But as you know, the city buys down, or better word, the self-insures. Those deductibles were they're down to $500 and $1,000. Uh, so we would look at buying those down just like we normally do. There'd be no change for the employee other than the uh, $75 copay, which would be the $65 difference would be reimbursed. So we looked at some scenarios. Uh, for example, last year there was 1,172, I think, office visits in the city of Boone for the insurance plan. So we just took half of those, uh, 576, and Worst case scenario, look at what if we had that many. I don't think there's a chance that that's going to happen, but we just looked at it that way. That would cost the city about $37,400 to reimburse those, those co pays of the difference between the 75 and the 10. In, a difference, or in addition to that, the city self insures, there's a self insure in the policy itself for 20% of employees if we, if we had a bad year. Uh, that would cost $112,000. That is actually in the insurance plan. It's part of the premiums. So if we took it one step further and say 21 employees or 30% uh, ended up using the max deductible, that costs an additional 56,000 above the premium because we, we already have 
the 112 that we're already paying for that's in the premium. So looking at some of the costs, if we looked at 50% of urgent care visits of, the, of that 1172, it's 37.40. And if we looked at the 21 employees, which would be maxed out of pocket, uh, and that's a bad year, uh, it'd be 56,000 know, for a total cost of 93,440 that were self-insured that would come out of city coffers. If you looked at the 50% office, this is for the urgent care, the same amount, 37.44, but 20, if we projected 20% or 14 employees that they maxed out their deductible, uh, the additional will be 37,440 because remember we're already uh, paying premiums for uh, the 20%, which is the 112. Now the good news is on uh, that plan, it saves the city 40,000 and some odd dollars in reduced premiums from what we're previously paying. In addition, we're not paying in the 162,000 that we budgeted for that 10.7% 10 10 increase. So there's potential savings of, of money there of 202,146, which far outweighs what we what we perceive as uh, worst case scenarios that could happen on what it would cost us. In addition, the city has a total of $260,000 basically on account with IPEP. And that's where that money comes from initially. So say we had a bad years on that self-insurance and it goes over that 20% that I talked about, that money would come from the 260. So we're not even to the $202,000 in savings yet. So after uh, a lot of discussion with staff and the committee, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Councilman McGinn, the, the PNA committee uh, made a motion to recommend the council to go to the IPEP BX SE plan. And staff feels that that uh, we have reasonably managed the risk of this plan, and and we think that uh, we'll be okay. There's no guarantees, obviously, but I also mentioned that staff will be looking at this plan every month to see where we're at, so that we can monitor and see if we see any concerns. Uh, Andre, do you have anything to add? Okay, uh, I'll answer any questions you have. Uh, if not, uh, a motion to uh, for council to go with the IPEP there's BXSE. And I'll just add, if I could, that we will have open enrollment for employees and we will make it mandatory for them this year to do it because we need to explain the, the uh, urgent care part of this. And, and as well as the city is taking, the, is taking on the risk of this. We believe it's managed risk, but the city is taking the risk. And then there's an out of state change to uh, networking yes compared to the other ones because they know about that right they oppose yeah oh, oh we're just we're okay. we're covering that right okay great sorry yep. i'll make that second call the roll yes second yes right yes 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 Next up, I'll say the uh, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there seems to me we might have one thing on the table. We do also, have a meeting on the 28th at 4 30. Okay, and also, if you do have a meeting, I will not be here. I will be gone that week, the last week in April. Uh, Chief Weeble will handle the public safety meeting. Okay. 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 Uh, utility, Stephen, go for it. Uh, your honor, well, uh, yes, Your Honor. A couple things. One, uh, there's a resolution, two resolutions supporting our 22nd and Lynn Street Housing Development LMI application with the state. Um, it's the same agreement, only two different sections. So the details have been tweaked and finalized, and ED passed it both of them earlier tonight. All, of, but we do have to do it separately as part of the, the application process. Bill, did I get everything? You did. Okay. Yeah, just one, if I could, I'll just add that at the May 3rd council meeting, there'll be real estate purchase options for the property up there uh, for you to consider. And we'll have the resolution along with that. Jim has handled those and put those together, and he would answer, could answer any questions you have that night. But they will be coming on the May 3rd. The application deadline for this is Brian, what is it, May? I think it's May 12th. May 12th. Uh, Brian Fritz is with us tonight, he's the developer of the project. 
Uh, he was also the development project of Alice Place out there on the south end. Um, the resolutions speak for themselves. And um, so if this project is passed and we hope to know, uh, if we proceed forward with this, we hope to know uh, sometime around Labor Day uh, about this, then obviously if that's the case, then a more detailed development agreement will be put together uh, between the developer and the city for your consideration. It goes along with the public hearing uh, and things like that. In addition, uh, I asked the Ames EVC uh, to put together a economic impact analysis for us on this project. Uh, that is on your desk. It's this right here. This will it'll show you, uh, if you look at the project impacts and assumptions of 14 and 14 and a half million dollar project. Uh, the family one is about 8.7, the elderly is about 5.8. Uh, it'll give you the positives, negatives, et cetera, of the project on that sheet. Very informational. The NGPC did a very good job on this. Uh, if you have any questions about that, I'll certainly uh, try to answer those questions. Uh, other than that, uh, Councilman Pickoff, I think that's all I have. Okay. Um, neither one of these is, is in the consent agenda, so we do need to vote on each of these. Right now. Correct. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve uh, 2862 resolution supporting proposed uh, agreement between the city of Boone and private developer for senior housing. Second. Call the roll. Second. Yes. Right? Yeah. Bird? Yes. 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 Yes.
plumbing project is complete. So it's working well, so we're ready to accept it. They want to say plumbing well, they want to say plumbing well. Okay. Call the roll. Okay. Okay. McKinnon? Yes. Sign? Yes. Mormon? Yes. 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 Y
And um, if you approve of these or you want to add some, that's what we're looking for tonight. And what we're planning on doing is bringing a resolution forward at the May 3rd council meeting to finally to approve the rules for the green space and as well uh, for the uh, fees that you will charge. And Justin, and the fees are on the bottom, the rental cost. Yep. So Justin was gracious enough, like you said, to put all this on one sheet. Plus the second sheet is the application that he put together for this. Uh, if there's any change or anything you like. And the way I think we have this set up, um, if it's an event that does not involve alcohol, uh, we talked about staff being able to make that approval. Uh, if it involves alcohol, they'll need a license and that will come to the, to the council for approval. We also discussed, we looked at some fence that Justin found online. It's, it's a four foot fence, about eight foot long, I think. Eight, eight and a half, eight yep. And a half. It has its own feet. So uh, we looked at the price of that for, we need like 52 of them in order to, what we're assuming or projecting is when people want alcohol, they're gonna to wanna to use 8th Street from Story to the alley. We're gonna need that many feet to, to put on a barrier all the way around. Um, so we are looking at purchasing that and then renting that uh, so that we can get our money back on that fence. And I don't think, is that on here, Justin? Uh, no. So we talked about 300 bucks per event, I think, for the fence so that uh, we're going to use, uh, it's not budgeted money, so we're going to use uh, Chief Weevil's trust account that he has money in there for to pay for that. And another reason for using that account is that when we charge those rentals, that money can go back into his trust account to be reimbursed for the fence. You know, it's about four. It's about four thousand dollars to to purchase that fence. So, uh, Terry or Greg or Holly, if you guys anything else that you want to say, we staff is really looking for what the elected officials want for the rules of the green space on this sheet, and if you approve this application, and if you do, if this is what you want in this application, then. Uh, we'll come forward with a resolution at the May 3rd for approval of this. So I'll, I'll, uh, if you don't mind, I'll turn it over to the elected officials and you tell staff what you want us to take out, add, uh, what have you. No, I, I think it's pretty comprehensive. I think it looks right where it needs to be. Um, the only thing that I think we talked about taking out the damage deposit, didn't you, Chair? Yeah, we thought that'd be more hassle than it's worth. Um, also, we have decided on a name. The committee decided on a name, and uh, Council Member Stecker came up with Nathan Story Green Space. Yeah, I'm, putting, I'm throwing you under the bus here. So, Nathan Story Green Space, I think she did that so nobody would ask exactly where it is. In the county or city is implied. Oh, right. So, Agent Story Green Space, if that's okay with council, we want to go ahead and get that sign on, underway, right? Holly's going to work with our steel guy and design it and get it hopefully up there before uh, kickoff. Um, second thing is hybrids. Um, we want to put a Kaibo up there permanently. We have enough money in our account to do that pretty easily. Seasonal. Huh? Seasonal. Yeah, for uh, May, June, July, and August for the events. Now, if there's an event up there, we're probably going to have to add one or two, depending on the event. But that would be the responsibility of the people holding that event, unless it's a city-sponsored event. But we have the money to do that. And then the rental fees and stuff would go back into the account to supplement that year after year. And I, what was it, rental, JR? 160 bucks for the ADA handicap session. Per month, right? Yeah, and that's a one service per week. So yeah, it's 600 bucks. And we, like I said, we have the money in the account. So initially we can put that bill, it doesn't cost the city anything. And then from that point forward, we'll use the rental fees. To pay for that. How about as approached by? Are you getting anything different for nonprofits? 
I'm just we saying. We talked about that, that, didn't we? I told you. Well, I had a, uh, I think he's a pastor and they do like the church service and feed people breakfast. Uh, and he's a choir. I don't know. Well, the, the only thing we discussed, Your Honor, was, was the fact that if we open that up to nonprofits, we may not have enough weekends to rent. Yeah, I, mean, I get it. <laughs> Because we design this, all revenue goes back into the fund to sustain the green space. And as of today, there's already vandalism damage. Yeah. So we are just getting ahead of the curve when it comes to it. There's some pain on the benches up there. Yeah. So and it's, people sticking signs to the benches of damage to paint out as well. So, um, so I. I mean, uh, we'd be willing to consider it if you have a viable option for a nonprofit. I, I, I don't have a problem with that, but you may have to limit that to right. so many yeah. days out of the season or no, I mean, well, another point there is that you know you could show up at any point and use it. You just can't reserve it, you know, possibly without a deposit. You know, if, yeah. if a nonprofit were interested. Show up as long as it's not raining, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, did JR's talk about what they do at the parks for nonprofits? What Wasn't that some discussion? Yeah, what do you do? JR's split the cost for them, yeah, they do a 50%. Well, they pay half, yeah. I don't have a problem with that, but it's got to be scheduled. I, I think it's got to be scheduled, yeah, because if you don't, and if you don't. Family show while we're having a family reunion there. The next thing you know, you got, and they're all like fighting on, hey, we were here first. And I think it's scheduled. Oh, it, it absolutely has to be scheduled. But yeah. if we want to reduce it to 50%, I don't have a problem with that, but I think we need to limit the, the number during that season. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be that. What do you think? I don't know. I, I, I think we had the discussion during the green space side of it that if we, if we start getting into nonprofits, and we just start locking down weekends. I mean, there's only so many in a year. And we're already talking first Thursdays of the month for the entire summer for the kickoff farmer's market. And then if we Puffer, start Puffer, Car Show, Fourth of July, downtown, Valley, Jump yeah. in June. Right. And then we start going down the slope of, well, we got two weekends a year where we can rent it out to. So if we do do it, it has to be standard for everyone, and we got to stick to it. Yeah. If we if you do get a nonprofit asking, maybe point them towards the park from the pavilion, something like that, since you already have sort of policy there. And then if that's full, then maybe revisit it. Okay. Um, because park if they have a church service, the parking's going to be an issue. Um, it's it's really not very big. I know you sort of set up for something like that. You know, and our fees are comparable to the ones that our partners charge do. And Julie's going to take care of the scheduling, scheduling and uh, reservation and stuff. And, and we did discuss too, we are fully aware we're going to have to tweak this. This is just to start it. If we go a year or two and decide that it's not working, we we're fully aware that we're going to have to come back around and look at it. Yep. I think go with what you've got here for now and then see how it works. Yeah, with the exception, I take out the damage deposit. Yep, I got that out. Yep. I think I think that's good. So we need to cover a lot of I okay. think you can make a mandatory something, whatever it is that's got to be scheduled, then you can read through whatever, you know. And we have on here that uh, 72 hours is the minimum that you have to schedule it and, and uh, fill out the application for rental. Right. So the whole staff has time to look at it. Right. Yeah. And you know, our goal is to make sure that space is being used a lot. That yeah. really nice. um, Councilman Stepper and, and the Art Commission have put together a program that will kick that off, I think, and get it started and make people aware of what's going on in there. And the kickoff event, just so everybody knows, will be the first Thursday in June. And uh, we have some plans we'll share with you as soon as we finalize what, what's going on. Um, well, the ribbon cutting and so forth. So save that for you. Yeah. But it'll be able to be rented before then. 
Yeah, yes, right? For May. Yes. For in May. Yeah, okay. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, this, I just wanted to make sure that you didn't no, want. This will actually then be final approved by the elected official that the May 3rd council, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll be, I'll be, so yes, yeah. sir. So after the third, we can start with when you want to start taking Preservation. The second is approved. So once this is approved, we can start taking sure. the cash on the third on the fourth. Okay. Well, it won't be approved until the third, then they have to have 72 hours to get approval, correct? You can start that first week. You can start taking requests. Okay. Before I can I just want to make sure I the fuel on the Senate amount. I just want to make sure I'm sorry. Um we have to change that speaking well Okay. You want 24 hour business hours then? 72 business hours of business hours. Oh, anybody put an application on Friday from Monday. Oh, that's right. This could be so it'd be 70 with the 72 business hours. Yeah, we yeah, talk about that. Three business three business three business three business three business three business Okay, are we good on yeah. that? Any other questions or anything? I'll go to my last item. As well on your desk, you have, uh, you're going to talk about the road with the school. Councilman Mormon handed this out right here to you all. And then also I put on your desk the proposal. Uh, I will share with you that uh, the public safety committee, Stephen, you know, the public safety committee uh, met with the school on April 14th. It was at their request because there had been some uh, possible changes they were talking about on the road. As you know, we talked initially the southern road and then it went a uh, north road. Uh, their engineer looked at the north road and found some potential problems or issues. Uh, as our engineer says, a road can be built anywhere. It just comes down to the tasks and the money. So they they made a pitch to us. Oh, pitch probably isn't a fair word, but we listened to their engineer. And after that, uh, we listened to what we thought they were talking about or wanted. Uh, we took a break, and the public safety committee met here in the council chamber real quick to discuss uh, with staff. And ultimately, as a result of that discussion, uh, the public safety committee made a motion to offer the school up to $750,000 for a completed road from Hancock on that Southern route to Airport Road. In addition, which they, the school had asked previously, agreed to waive permits and inspection fees, which I get from it to be around $45,000. And then there's some talk about where the sewer goes. And I know staff initially wanted, thought the sewer needed to come from Crestwood, but uh, we don't feel, and you can change our minds if you want, that there will ever be any development south of there. So it's not necessary for that those utilities to come from Crestwood. They could go to Hancock. Whether there's discussion whether or not that will take a lift station or not by the school, but so that kind of gives you what we talked about. Uh, so not to exceed seven hundred fifty thousand. We have since learned. Uh, that there is a party that is against the road being that south road of being built and that party met with the school last friday i was asked to be a part of that meeting uh so i went and attended i really didn't offer anything because it's it's, it's not really between the city unless you all tell me different the city's not involved in that uh as far as the land purchase of the land etc et uh to add to this I took a phone call today from Eric from uh, DLR, he's their architect. In the meeting on the 14th, he indicated that the cost of the road from Hancock to the Southern Road from Hancock to Airport Road would be about 1.4 million. Uh, in the discussions we had in the public safety meeting, uh, Councilman Mormon suggested that we add 100,000 to that to 1.5, that's where we get 50% and uh, that that amount was discussed in the meeting that possibly that's what they would ask for us for the city to pay 50% of that fee. 
However, in my phone call today with Eric and VLR, he indicated that there was a mistake made in that meeting and uh, by DLR and that the cost of that road possibly could be at least half times that more, which would take it to $2.25 million, which obviously changes the 50% if, if council so, excuse me, so chooses. And in that email, and I'm sorry, I don't have the front of me, I know you do, I believe it said, he requested council not to take any action tonight. Uh, you can uh, give that as due consideration, however you choose. Um, so that's where we are. Councilman Mormon, is there anything you want to add or Councilman Ray, anything I've left out or what? Given, given the constant changing information that we get, um, we made it perfectly clear to them prior to them purchasing this land, if they had done surveys and, and due diligence when it came to this property, and they assured us that they had, that is not the case. And not going into any detail on it, um, that seven, seven, or $750,000 offer that we made them was fair and equitable. They were all about it when we made it. And the circumstances that followed that meeting have changed their mind. And I know that that's driving the cost of this road. I'm confident that that's what's going on. And we were not involved from a city standpoint in the purchase of this land or the location of this land or the cost of this land, nothing. We had nothing to do with it. And now they're asking us to front some of this cost involved with that property that we don't necessarily need to do so personally from my standpoint the seven hundred fifty thousand dollar cap not to exceed should stand and i would like to see that motion happen tonight because if we don't do that tonight i think that it sends a clear message to them that we would be willing to renegotiate this thing and uh, who knows what the next cost price so let me get this right so the landowner the landowners that sold it, the land in the school are now trying to dictate where the road goes which that should have been worked out I, now. we have nothing to do with that we have nothing to do with that I would agree so that changes the numbers obviously if that's in fact that's my case. that's my feeling because if we go to the north um what we didn't know prior to this meeting if you look at that map that i handed out there's a little dotted line up at the northern edge of that road. That is a floodplain. Okay. And if we cut through that, the Corps of Engineers will be involved. The DNR will be involved. And if the Corps of Engineers get involved, it could be two years. By the time they do the studies, by the time everything happens, it could be at least that long. Not to mention it requires a bridge. It requires a bridge. And when the engineers said that, she said, her words were, I've only been on board for a week. That means they didn't engage their civil engineer in this process until a week ago. Uh, that's not our problem. No. So with that said, when they move it and they start talking about bridge, and this is a big bridge. If you look at that floodplain, this bridge is probably two or 300 feet wide. Going across that that center of that flood, it's a million dollars. Yeah. Okay, we were, we were pitched the idea, right? We told that the reason we had to go south, right? Which would have evaporated all our ideas of the community development that we were hoping on the north side. Really, wasn't much advantage to the city. At all for them to go south. The idea was pitched just as you said. That the going to the north and require a bridge. Um, and with that information that we have now, uh, that option, even if they wanted to say, well, we'll abandon the south, we'll go north, it's going to cost us even more right. than what they're saying now. The bottom line is here the question for us tonight is have we acted in good faith? all the way through this process and i believe that we have 
100%. And by our decision the other day to get the three quarters of a million dollars up to that towards the South End Road project, because that's what they felt was the way they needed to go. Um, I think it just ends it right there for us. We've done everything we can. So. They shot us 1.1 1 .1 to 1 1.4. Right, right. And we went high end. Yeah, yeah, we did. They said 1.1 1 .1 to 1.4. We went to 1.5 because I know how this works. Right? Yeah. And I wanted to be fair with them. And so that $750,000 offer was more than fair. Offer was more than fair. Yeah, I'm with you. I think we stick to our. No, no. I'm trying to adjust it. So I. I'm just saying that we we like uh, Councilman Ray said we did it in good faith. We've been we've been acting in good faith this entire time. We've been blindsided a couple of times on this process. We didn't know anything about the covenant with the drainage system. We didn't know anything about the the floodplain that they had to have known about when they bought this property. That's something that has to be declared in, in that. So I, I think that the city, that was a fair, equitable offer, and we should stick to it. So, yeah, and I think if we don't stick with that, we don't know where it's going to go from there. What the exactly. going That's to be exactly that. right. Exactly. This has been committed to, it seems like, um, in, your, in your committee meeting. Was in the committee right. meeting? Okay. So we we don't know. The, the problem was I held that I held their feet to the fire on their original quote of three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars for eleven hundred feet of road. That's what they told us. Our city engineer, Dan Reagan, said that that told that road cost was going to be three million dollars. Well, guess what? They basically said that he was out of his mind. That wasn't going to be anywhere close to that. Now we're at $3 million. Not that we should take it in personal. No. But, you know, we, I do just, have, we do hire people that give us the information we're looking for. Right. We should respect that. And I did kind of like the dismissiveness that we had on that. Uh, and, that side note. Yeah, I, I just don't understand how we went with. At that meeting, I said, so is your three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars number right given all the new information? Well, no, it'll probably be five hundred thousand. Okay, I get that. Sometimes things change. So that's why we up that. I I asked to up that off. So I I would make a motion. I, yeah, I would make a motion that we stick to the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar cap as described. That's seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for a complete road from the connection at uh, Hancock to Corporal Sned and Ryan, including all the infrastructure, everything. That's complete, and we're out of it. And when we will, when when we we won't pay that until we complete the No, there would be a twenty eighty agreement that the cost most likely either the school's attorney or Jim would put together. That would specify all the. The items that need to be in there. In particular, we don't know how we're going to fund this yet. Obviously, uh, we will start looking at that on how we'll fund it. Uh, generally, seven hundred fifty thousand doing a bond on that. That's not a lot of money to do a bond. So we'll look. Andre and I will look at some other ways. If you bond, then I'm sure there's going to be some restrictions as far as how the money can be spent. As opposed, to if we choose something else, then there may not be those restrictions. But they'll have to account for it, give us proof of it, all that, all those items, Steve. Just, just so that I'm sure I'm understanding this also, the offer is seven hundred and fifty thousand, and they're obligated to this original location. They can put, they can put it wherever they want, wherever they want, wherever they want to. Okay. Should we yeah. should we amend? Should we just change this to direct staff to create the, the twenty eight agreement? Subject to these parameters, uh, that probably would be a good idea. Listen, yeah. I I would just point out from an economic development perspective, I would not put any numbers down. Period. At this point, other than letting them know that we are firm at the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and the reason I say that is, is that 
we have several EV projects that come up that might even make that impossible at $750,000. I'm talking housing, I'm talking wellness center, I'm talking, we've got a lot of things going on in the right now. If we pledge that money, we're gonna to have to come up with that money. It's not our job to get the school district to figure out what they're gonna do. If we just say, listen, we're at $750,000, come to us and you get this figured out, that's on them. But we're not committed and we don't have to come up with that money last minute or or something else it's on our time frame and we've got other projects we got west park and marion we got the wellness center we got housing development we got potential three other things off the top of my head too that we're still working on all of it needed our attention and staff time other than this project because the school district could just come back and change so it again what you're so saying no but that's yeah what you're no, saying right. is we don't commit to the 750 dollars you've already committed that we are up to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. that's where we are Next move is on them. And yeah. we focus staff time and, and we just say, come back to us when you figure this out. We'll do our best to help you out. But no, so I, wait on the 2080 until they're ready to yeah, have more yeah, and more solid. Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 I think mm -hmm. if you could just hold off on that and let them know where you're at and see what happens. I mean, by you saying that, that tells me as a student administrator that I'm going to approach the school and I'm going to tell them that the city is basic without doing the official that the city's in for seven hundred up to up to seven hundred fifty thousand for the road. And it's not that I'm against the number; it's just that I know how limited our staff is and the time we have, and we got a lot more projects that need the attention than a, a twenty eighty agreement right. that could sit for six months. All right. Well, so I, think, I, I think just your motion sets the sets the tone. I like, I like your motion. motion. Tell us exactly where, like I said, it's where we're at. We can see that. And so we're not committed to it. All right. We've offered it. We have, but, but we have not accepted it. You know, no agreement. Well, that, that offer was pending council approval. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yes. So now it is on the school district and the school board to come back to us with their final numbers to tell us what is going on. No more staff time. No more city time. We focus on the things that we need to for the community that. Honestly, I've been delayed because we've been waiting for them to come back to us. Okay, so, so just so we're clear, council, the committee has recommended up to seven hundred fifty thousand. I know we don't want to say the document yet, but we still need to. Can we just reiterate that? We still need to either affirm the council needs to affirm with the motion that that's what it is up to, and then leave the staff to just move forward with our discussion. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. If I could, just, yeah. the only question is, are you you just talking about what what Councilor Morris said, up to seven hundred fifty thousand for the school road, not specifically the location? Is, right. I just, just want to clarify right. that. Our commitment to the school road. Thank you. All the road. Yes. Second? Yes. Right? Yes. Third? Yes. Again? Yes. Sign? Yes. Mormon? Yes. And just a quick side piece on what Councilmember Mormon said. The final decision for the road is not a city decision. This is a school decision. This is compliance issues with traffic that we need to, that they need to, that we need to. But the location of the road itself is not a city decision. That's right. Right. So I just want to be perfectly clear about that in case anyone else gets any questions. And I, I would just note also that the, the city is in for the traffic study, splitting it with the school half of twenty one thousand. Right, right. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but the, the thing is though, what? How do they, Danny? You can you talk about this. How do we? How does MSA know where to do that traffic study if we're not sure where the road is? Yeah, do it until the study. Yeah, until they decide on the road. Right. Do it okay, and so you MSA MSA providing other information on too, not just the road, just not just the right, right? So they were going to look at the size of the culvert, right? Um, but we still but we don't know where that culvert is going to go. So if you would maybe relay that to MSA just so that they're on the same page, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Number six, consent agenda. Are there any items on the consent agenda that you'd like to remove and discuss separately? And if not, I need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Call 
Yes. Greg? Yes. Bird? Yes. Nigger? Yes. Brian? Yes. Norman? Yes. Chippa? Yes. Okay, number seven, we have nothing. Number eight, I have no comment. Number nine, council comments. Number 10, any public comments for items not on the agenda? Okay, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Like the man out here, sorry. It's better when everyone's still here. Yeah. Um, ben McCall on Five Mile Drive. Um, I would like to discuss Five Mile Drive, specifically the amount of traffic and dust. Um, I think you're aware that a study was done about five years ago on the traffic flow out there. At that point, we had 130 cars a day going past my house. Um, five years ago, there was even less traffic out there. Now it's just nonstop. Um, because of the study, I believe um, improvements were done uh, to the base of the road and also to the ditches. Uh, they got dug out, some of the trees got taken down. Road was better for a while. Um, at this point, the road is being graded frequently um, with the white rock and the frequent grading dust is almost nonstop out there. Um, so the dust is becoming a health issue. Uh, it's becoming almost impossible to stand outside, let alone enjoy my yard. Um, we do have quite a windbreak, but it's just not stopping the dust whatsoever. Um, I know it's been brought up previously to council about the possibility of paving, and now is probably not the time when you guys are talking about spending money on other projects. Um, but I would like to know if there's an option to do anything with a hard surface out there. Um, if not a hard surface, I would like to request that some sort of dust control be done. Um, if that for some reason can't be budgeted, um, then I would be willing to pay for the dust control as long as the road wouldn't get graded to minimize what I pay for. They are. Um, if you recall, a handful of years ago, they came to council and complained about the condition of the road. The condition of the road was bad because the road ground we got had like six rocks and a lot of sand. We went to white rock, which is a lot better material. So it is a great road ground out here. It, it, it handles all the traffic well. Um, we pretty much, you guys gave me the directive to improve the road idea. The, the dust control, if he puts it down, then we cannot maintain it. And then if it turns into a washboard or has potholes or something like that, we can't make it because we maintain it, the calcium goes away and it does that. I can I can't afford to do that any other road. Um, and plus it would be unsafe if we did not maintain the road if it turns into a washboard situation. And that's what that's gonna happen. If they drive on it continually, the white box is gonna go away and it's gonna be really well, it's gonna turn into a washboard. Well, that's why we maintain it. We pull the rock back up to know we've got a good mound there. Pretty seems water on gravel road, so we've got a good um, mound so the water will drain. That's what we did. It took about a few years to do it, but it's actually in very good shape. I think we had a third option too, didn't we, Ben? About closing it off. Yeah, I mean, and if, if that's an option, I'd be happy to look at that. Um, I'm not the only person to look on the road. Um, but well, that's why I asked because the, your neighbors didn't agree to that. So, has anything changed? They didn't at the time, but I essentially have all the neighbors out there now. Okay. Um, so, you know, that might be something that could be discussed. And I would not be opposed to working on I think that would minimize any washboarding, it would minimize dust. Um, so right now, it is essentially the shortcut to get to Walmart or Fairway. Instead of hitting the highway, I don't understand why anybody would want to go down the gravel road, but if you want to come out and visit, I'll, I'll set chairs out there for you walking to buy. Um, you know, one other thing we thought about is speed, but it really doesn't do much good. If nobody's going to control the speed. You can put up whatever sign you want, um, even to the fact of putting up some sort of well, speed bumps to slow people down. How often are we out maintaining that road? 10 days. They're out there about every week, regardless of the needs that are does needed. That seems extraordinary. Unbelievable, frankly. 
Is there a possibility of setting a longer timeline on that? You can do whatever you need. I've been told as part of a route, so they do it regardless. Well, try to keep them safe and so and it's unfortunate that that's get the dust that's part of the non gravel road and that's part of the, the part of why you purchase it there but it's a road that you guys want me to get safe and better conditions and that's what we do oh so, no you can definitely improve it and i'm not disagreeing with that they are i'm disagreeing is why ron has made it dustier than the gravel and you don't seem to want to listen to me that's not fair but it is no it's not well, i'm sorry actually, because actually, you came to us with the drainage issues which we fixed mm -hmm. we came and improved the rock surface which we did yes and that's created another problem but when you come to us with the issues they have been fixed correct yes okay so i'm asking for some sort of assistance with the Let us visit with, we'll, we'll talk about some, I'll visit with JR. Okay. And then somebody will report back to you, but you know what we came up with. Will that work? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments or items on the agenda? Uh, this meeting is adjourned.